So, in this chapter, we will learn to, to build user preferences. So, what are user preferences? So, when you go to the settings of uh, your phone, you may have some dedicated settings uh, for your application or your system. So, since anything in Android is an application, you may want to have dedicated uh, preferences, dedicated settings for your application. So, the goal of doing that is that doing so helps you to have a, a unified ecosystem. So, every application has the same layout for displaying settings. So, it improves the user experience. And even if you can build this, this screen by hand, I suggest you to use already available components. So, how we can do that? First of all, we can notice that preferences are grouped. So, we will have to group preferences. So, we can have a title for a set of preferences, for instance, network, and saying that in this case, I want to do that, in this case, I want to do this. Okay? So, there are a few guidelines when we want to develop preferences in Android. Uh, the first one is to check the API level. According to this API level, some, the guidelines change. For API level inferior to 7, the guidelines suggest to have no groups. So you cannot group uh, elements for networking. You just put the elements. For API from 8 to 10, you have to build group of 2 maximum. For API 11 to 15, group of 4 maximum. And finally, from 16, you can create dedicated groups uh, when you have uh, more than four elements. Okay? So, to, do, to build a preference, you have to extend preferent act, preference activity. So, this class will help you to build a hierarchy of preferences. And on small screen, this preference will be displayed first titles and we, when you click on titles another screen will appear for displaying the elements of the group on larger screen the, uh, the two elements will be displayed side by side okay to build the preference activity we will manage shared preferences well, that we already seen in a previous uh, chapter um, we have to, be, to implement unbuild header if we want to separate header and group of preferences. So, let's build a simple preferences. So, a preference is what is a title describing the preference, a summary describing what is it related to, um, a key uh, that will be used inside of the shared preference in order to save the data, and finally, a default value. This default value is very important because at the first launch of your application, we have to fix some value for your preferences. So this is where uh, you, you set up the, the, the initial value. So once we have done that, we just have to define an XML file. And this is XML file will just describe, I have some preference screen. And this preference screen is composed of a checkbox preference. So it means that we have to check the element in order to activate or unactivate uh, this preference. And this is a preference for managed synchronization. And the default value is true. Once we have done that, you can build your own settings activity that extends preference activity. And in the onCreate method, you first call the super and then you add the, the new resource that you just defined, which is r.xml.preferences, which is exactly what we have seen there. Okay? So, once this has been done, uh, you have to declare inside of the Android manifest.xml 
Um, to launch this activity, you just have to run an intent saying, I'm the current context and I want to uh, run setting activity dot class and start activity. And doing that, you will have this screen of preferences. So how you can group uh, preferences, you just have to add an item inside of your XML, which is preference category, and you build uh, your hierarchy like that. So when, we, when you have um, preferences, you may want to start an intent when clicking on some elements. To do that, you just have to specify that this particular uh, preference will run an intent, and this intent will, for instance, have an action, which is action view for this URL. Okay, so when you will click this intent, this will launch an intent that will trigger uh, a web view. So you can specify any kind of intent, I'll describe this later. So, know that you have understand how to save your settings. Uh, you can grab a value of a settings just using the shared preferences like we've seen in the previous video. So the first one is, the first thing to do is to grab the preference manager and get uh, child preferences, and then we can ask for some values. Okay, so this is not all we have to do when we deal with preferences. We also have to register uh, for new event. For instance, your application is closed and the user is modifying preferences, you have to be notified. Okay, so you have to uh, register through uh, method register on shared preference change listener or unregister if you don't want to uh, be notified when something changes. And then you can do uh, action uh, according to uh, what has been done. So, when the preferences change, and if you are, if you ask to be notified, the callback that will be triggered will be on shared preference change, and in this case, you just have to ask whether which preference has been changed in order to do something. So uh, you can also define uh, fragments for preferences. And in this particular case, uh, you just have to specify that, okay, this preference file will run this fragment. So how we can do that? We just fill the, the Android fragment uh, field setting and we specify our, our fragment. We can then define the contents and inside of uh, our main classes, we have to define a class which is pref fragment inner, which extends preference fragments. So this is the same than previously, but it's only for fragments. And then you just have add preference from resource exactly like before. Okay, and then you have to modify the class uh, extending preference activity in order to handle on build header and is valid fragment in order to manage the thing. So to sum up, uh, uh, you can save easily uh, data uh, for, from your preferences uh, through shared preferences, and it's easy to, to save a small value like booleans, and you have to respect the API guidelines uh, in order to be uh, uniform with the rest of the system. And you do not have to abuse of preferences. Uh, everything is configurable, but you cannot provide to the user uh, a configuration for anything. Okay, so this is it.